Okay. Yeah. So what's the major difference between executive and team coaching? I think that's a really easy one to answer because it's right there in the title. An executive coach focuses on working with executives and a team coach focuses on working with teams, groups of people. So an exec coach is going to be focused on one-to-one -one conversations. They're going to be talking to somebody and just that person. Team coaches, it's groups of people. Um, that's what it boils down to at the simplest thing. Why do we have that difference? Can a team coach coach an executive? Yes. Can an executive coach coach a team? Probably. Um, why have they focused there? Well, actually, there's no good reason. Many coaches that I know can and do jump between the two for a variety of work, for needs of work. So why do we differentiate? And I'll be honest, job titles. The reason I've had executive coach in my job title in the past is uh, I charge more. Um, not even going to pretend otherwise. It was it allowed me to get people to pay more money. I was using very similar tools. I was using a very similar framework. Along there, but my focus was very very different. When I'm working with the executives, we are working on high level thinking. Very often, it is not me there to tell them anything. I am there as a coach in its purest sense. I am there to help them, partner with them, so they can structure their thinking, they can come up with ideas that they will take forwards about running their business. It is not about me at all. So the role of an executive coach in there is as a soundboard, as a challenging partner, as a cheerleader sometimes. You are there to work with them so that they can work through their thinking, they can make better decisions, they can be clearer on the reasons they're going to do things and what those things may be. Okay? It is very much what I would refer to as professional coaching, focused on that one person, partnering with them, respecting them, not judging them, and helping them through questions, through challenge, and through various other tools, to structure their thinking in a way that helps them. The aim is quite simple. At the end of the session, they have clarity on what they need to do. They have an action they could take and they are willing to take accountability for that action. It's not about other people. It's definitely not about fixing things. Remedial coaching is something that I wish was consigned to history, but it's not quite yet. So that differs from a team coach because a team coach has a group of people. So we're not focused on one, we're focused on the collective effort. How are they gonna move forward? How, what action are they gonna take? It's very often a more facilitator style conversation about drawing people out so that they engage in the conversation together, creating a safe where we as a group understand we can say things that might be contentious, that might be misconstrued. But we can say it in a space where the contentions can be dealt with. The misconstruences, constructions, whatever the right word is there, um, can be brought to the fore. There's no judgment, there's no assumptions made. We just ask, what did you mean by that? That could be seen as a negative. Help me understand better, please. So we're using similar, but not the same techniques. Okay? Because we're not only focused on one person, and paying attention to their nuances we're focusing on to many people what they're saying what they're not saying uh, how they're expressing it and helping others understand it's not about my understanding it's about everybody else's understanding as well so we're using questions in a slightly different way we're still challenging we're still very often hitting a point that they don't want hit making them face up to things that maybe not all of them want to admit is a problem. Team coaching is great, it's satisfying, but it can be done at the executive level. It can be done at the coalface. It's a team of people. You're helping them move forwards together. Them take an action and accountability for that action. But it's not an I, it's a we. And that's an important difference here. 
So executive coaches can be great team coaches. I've seen some that aren't. Not because they're bad coaches, but because their skill set is in the one-to-one setting. And I've seen team coaches struggle in the executive space, in the one-to-one space, because their skill set is over there. There's no reason they can't learn the other skills. That's just what it is. So when you're thinking about the type of coach you want, consider who they're coaching, in what format. Do you want an executive coach to work with somebody one-on-one? Or do you want a team coach to work with the group? Whether that group is executives or developers or analysts or whatever you've got. Do you want them to work or do you want them to do both? Do you want them to work with the team and with the individuals? In which case, they need both skill sets. It's really up to you to work out what you need when you're engaging coaches. A good coach will help you understand that, help you understand whether they're the right person. And if they're not, very likely introduce you to somebody who is more like the right person based on the conversation. What you need to do is, and it's always down to you when you're engaging coaches, are they the right person for me? And then a contract appropriately so that everybody's clear about why your coach is there and what they can do for you. If you've got to this point in the video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, a like would be appreciated. If you want to hear more from me, more answers to questions that maybe you've got in the Agile world, please subscribe to the channel. And if you've got a question that you really want answered, drop it in the comments. I promise we'll get around to it. Thank you.